<clears throat> okay, welcome to the unwatched uh, channel again. Let me make this just a little more all on the screen. Today we're sort of doing a computer discussion on uh, how to choose the AWG magnet wire size and how many turns of uh, uh, goes on each coil for a wind turbine. I think I stuck all the words in there you need, but it's, it's for a wind turbine, it's the coils that are on the stator, you need to know what size of wire to buy, and how many turns you have to have on each coil. Okay, that's the title. So we're gonna have a real quick rundown on, on what three phase uh, motors and generators do. You'll notice here we have uh, uh, red coils and every third one, see, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Same thing with the green and the blue. So, these red coils are going to be wired in series, as are the greens and the blues. Uh, if you're doing Y connection, one end of those three groups will all be twisted together, and the other three is your, your phases. Um, if you're uh, doing delta, uh, then the, uh, the the ends are connected together and you get the three. Okay, now there's something to notice here. Um, and this will be more important because we're going to go right on to uh, generators. We're going to start with motors and then we're going to jump into generators, which is with the, what we're probably getting most interest on. You notice how when you look at these, the magnet is filling the, the uh, uh, coils pretty well. Same thing on the other side. But the other two 90 degree parts of it, there's a lot of open space. You're seeing the background of the screen. That's an open hole. Uh, but actually, that's where the work is being done because it's when the magnet moves across one side of the coil that it generates electricity. It, if it was turning uh, counterclockwise, this red coil would be well into making uh, like say positive electricity and as the magnet got to the other side went across this it makes negative it's alternating current it's also alternating current because uh, every other magnet has north facing up every other magnet has north facing down um, the number of coils and magnets that's negotiable uh, because you have three phases the number, the total number of coils has to divide by three. So you have three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and in this case, 30. Now your magnets, they're either uh, up or down, north or south, you got two choices. So your number of magnets has to divide by two. Uh, you don't want to get a big difference between the number of magnets and the number of coils uh, because the whole purpose of having different numbers of magnets than coils is to prevent what they call cogging. If all the uh, magnets come over a coil at exactly the same time, then it's going to try to uh, jump ahead to that, to that place, and then it's going to want to resist going past it. It's going to try to lock on like a stepper motor. You know, where, where, when it gets to where it goes, you can't hardly force it away from it. Okay, so... We know that we have to divide the, the coils by three, the magnets by two, uh, and then we need to know the coil size. So we're going to come over here and look at this uh, drawing. Now, this, this, is, this one here is probably as good as any. You'll notice that the magnet is completely in the center of the coil, and uh, contrary to what you see in, on videos and books and things, uh, this coil is parallel to the side of the magnet. It only makes electricity, or uses electricity if it's a motor, when the magnet is passing these strands of wire. It makes it in one direction on one side, and the other direction on the other side, because the, the, the winding goes like from the bottom to the top here, and here's the top to the bottom, because it has to go round and around. So, if you make your, your coil gagged open at the top trying to fill this, this dead space here, 
uh, the amount of time that the width of the, the coil is under magnet goes away. You might lose a, a third of your power. Also, if you, if you try to wrap your coil real tight on the corners and it, uh, and it bulges out here and here, then it's not uh, your best fit of the magnet. So in this case, we ran it off the ends because there's not much going on out here as far as uh, generators go. Uh, and that gave us this inside shape. And then uh, arbitrarily picked a number over here for the spacing between the coils. You don't need any spacing between the coils, but you can't manufacture uh, perfect coils that, uh, um, you know, nothing will be sticking up, to, you know, to, to make it touch the other one. And, and, and you're talking two different phases, so there'll be a voltage difference if those things uh, get the uh, insulation off of them and they do touch. In this case, we have over here, uh, hey, it's on the screen. What, what I've been doing was on the screen. Yeah, it's on the screen. 0 0.1072. Ten, uh, a little over a tenth of an inch uh, is the design uh, difference. And uh, that will probably be less in actuality. Now, once we get this, this distance between them here sorted, uh, then we can measure, uh, you know, from, your, from the dimension you gave to the inside of the coil. And that gives you the, uh, the thickness of your coil. Uh, the height is, is the width, and, and this is thickness, uh, length, width, and thickness. And if you come over here, and, and whatever that number is, you make it the same all the way around the, uh, the coil, the same width from the magnet to the outside. Because you wrap it, the wire is just as thick here as it is there. <clears throat> it makes sense to some people. Um, and all this shenanigans was two things. One, it establishes the size of the coil you're going to make for your uh, homebrew coil winder. It's going to have a block in the middle with a hole in the middle. It's the shape of this inside. Because that's the first thing it wraps around. Now you need to take and uh, draw a line halfway between these, this inner uh, shape and the outer shape. This length is important. Uh, it's written right off the edge of the screen here, but uh, the average wrap length of a turn is 7.731 inches in this motor. They're all different. Uh, you can, uh, you know how long your magnet is, and you know how wide your magnet is, and you can figure out what these curves are, but you need to get a fairly close number for that. Not hard on, on a computer. We just, uh, uh, go up here to the top and it says analyze and length and click it and <laughs> it tells you to in four decimal places. Uh, I know that's cheating but that's the way it was done. Uh, we're going to get to the uh, this over here. This is uh, the generator but we're doing a motor because uh, people uh, think that motors and generators are the same. Uh, they're both three phase. That part is the same but the way you hook up with the coils and stuff uh, really ought to be different on the generator than on the on the motor okay where are we now we're going to go and uh oh, let's just make a bigger picture again oh crap wait a minute get back to that's on the screen um let's form rotate i'm going to rotate the magnets Center rotation is the center of this circle. If it will draw the center of the circle. Center. Okay. Now you watch these spaces come and go as it turns. Right? Um, <laughs> excuse me. It it, it 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 does the same thing, but when in actuality we're gonna uh, we're gonna rotate the magnets in the real world. Um, let me go off to the next picture. Where I think I can snag the magnet better over there. Yeah, there we go. And we still need to struggle to get this thing to find the center of the motor.
Okay, now we're getting there. Okay, now we're moving magnets. And in any place you stop, you know, you can see what they're doing. I don't know if you can see the open spaces coming and going or not. Uh, because the uh, when I'm rotating this, it's in uh, wire view. Yesterday I, I, I tried something and it was, uh, the solids were moving around and, and you could really see it. But you can't see it today. Let's... Uh, Pull this screen over some. Okay. I think it was probably more clear than what we just had than it is here. Um, that an improvement? How about, uh, see up here. They just move so fast. Anyway, the, the, the thing is that magnets are moving across to one side of the coal and then they're moving across the other side. Uh, what we, we've got so far is that the, uh, uh, the magnets move, the stator coils are sitting still because you have to connect wires to them. Um, now we're gonna get on to, uh, remember the 7.731 inches long for the average wrap. That's a real important number. Now we're gonna jump down here to some calculations. Where are we? There we go. Um, I tried several different wire sizes uh, and we'll get to that in a minute. I tried 14, 16, 18 and across over here is 20 and 22 magnet wire. Those are the ones that were in range for uh, what I'm trying to do. Now, you can look up uh, uh, images.search.yahoo.com or the, the equivalent from Google, and uh, you search for magnet wire specifications chart, and it'll list it from uh, number two through number like 40. What you have here is your AWG wire size. That's American wire gauge size. Uh, there's also a metric version, but the, the tables are in both. If you understand one, you can understand the other one. I got some of the stuff I got, uh, did research on is only in Hindi. I can't read Hindi, but I can read the numbers and I know which one's bigger than the other one. So, 14. The resistance for 1,000 feet of wire is 2.525 ohms. The number 14 wire will carry 5.9 amps, another important number, amps. And this is the diameter of uh, number 14 wire. 62 thousandths would be a sixteenth of an inch, so it's bigger than a sixteenth. It's a pretty good sized wire. Uh, and on my, the far end of the scale, I got one that carries uh, 0.92 amps, but the resistance for 1,000 feet is 16.14. So somewhere in here is the sweet spot. Uh, the power that you can get out of your uh, generator or the, the maximum power that you can put into your motor is in watts. Uh, if you multiply the voltage times the amps, you get watts. So if in, uh, th th for this uh, motor, I'm gonna use a 48 volt uh, battery bank that I'm gonna charge off the wind but uh, 48 volts is uh, what I'm calculating off of because I'm gonna regulate this to drive a big fan. It's uh, 21 feet across. And um, 
48 volts is what I'm going to send to the motor. So that's what my design point is. Batteries fully charged on the generator side are 56 volts because the charge battery is about 14 volts. Uh, so I have to generate at least 60 to keep the battery bank up to uh, full charge of a 48 volt uh, battery bank because they need uh, 56 to be charged. And I can't charge to 56 volts if I'm only making 42. Okay. Uh, this, this first bunch of calculations, it's, it's, it's right and everything. It's just, um, uh, it's not as organized as, as after I did the first one, I started seeing what I needed and, uh, 16 seats, much, much more compact and neater. And then I redesigned how I was doing it again. Okay. I know somebody's, uh, figured out that 48 volts times 0.92 amps is uh, like 47 or 46 uh, watts. That's not a very powerful motor for a 21 foot fan. So what you have to do is you have to run multiple conductors. Now you don't count the multiple conductors in the length for your resistance because uh, if you have uh, six wires each one of them is carrying one sixth. Um, but you're, you're, uh, if I had, uh, let's see, what's this one? This is a 2.3 amp per wire times six conductors. That's 13.8 amps. So if I take the 48 volts divided by 13.8, I need 3.478 ohm uh, capacity on the wire, or it'll just burn in two. Right? It'll get hot and then it'll burn in two. But you'll be making smoke, and then you got to go to your sports car place that sells English sports cars and buy some cans of smoke like you use on an MG or a um, Austin Healey, which has Lucas Electrical System. And they tend to go up in smoke, so you have to put new smoke in them. Or you can just change the wire. Anyway, we need to make 3.478 ohms. If we take our ohms we need, and up here we have... Uh, how many ohms per thousand uh, linear feet of this wire? Uh, the ohms are the same by the wire gauge whether you have single insulated, double insulated, heavy insulated, or triple insulated. The ohm stays the same. It's only the thickness of the coating that's going to change. And the, and the diameter. This is, this is double insulated, these numbers. So, I'm taking the ohms I need uh, over the ohms per thousand feet to get what fraction of... Uh, uh, it is, and since it's a thousand, there's no other number in there. We just come right up with 544.8 feet. Now, here's the next little trick. Uh, that's how many feet of wire I have to have from beginning that wire to the to where, where like if, it's, if it was Y connected from where it goes into the Y to where you hook your power to it. They got to be 544.8 feet of wire. Now, because uh, this is three phase. I've got 10 coils to the phase, it goes in on one set of coils, and then it comes back out of the motor on a different set of coils, out of, out of another phase. So that's 10 coils plus 10 coils, that's 20 coils. So the, the, uh, the feet of wire is divided over 20 coils, equally spaced. You know, e equal amounts of wire on all 20 coils. So now this uh, ungainly number of feet has come down to 27.2 feet of wire. Okay, 544.8 divided by 20 is 27.2 feet. And uh, because our uh, length per wrap was in inches, we're going to change the, the wire feet into inches by multiplying by 12. So 27.2 times 12. This is the inches of wire, 326.9. Now, this is, um, oh, <laughs> uh, I calculated this, uh, this, this tables here, um, using the estimated, uh, coil size. This really should be that seven points, was a 7.7 .7 number, but the math works the same. It's just, a, this, say this is just a different motor, a different coil. Uh, I never changed the stuff over. On, on this particular uh, uh, thing here. I just know I come out with number 18 uh, with, with six conductors 
would, would uh, give me a compact coil that uh, would carry 13.8 amps. That's about all I want to put into it. So, if I divide the inches by the, uh, the inches to the wrap, I come up with 58.01 uh, wraps, six conductors wide. So if I take six times the, uh, this, uh, that's about a quarter of an inch. Uh, I'm going to show you a trick here. At least I think it's a trick. Um, you got to get these coils as thin as you can because the the uh, magnet force on um, uh, uh, it's it's uh, goes up as is the square of the closeness between the, the face and the magnet and the wires and the coil. If you're using magnets on two sides, um, uh, a double axial flow, then uh, to keep the, the mechanical things in line also, it's about four times the strength of the magnet because it, it goes north to south, that connects magnetically, then it goes through the stator to two magnets which are opposite of polarities. So basically you're making a loop, plus it's, it's, it's picking up from the magnets on either side of it. So it's much stronger. But, uh, but to get the, the, the maximum number of copper in there, uh, you got to keep it thin. And if you have uh, uh, the start of, uh, of your wires, like we're going to have six wires here, they have to be connected together at both ends. Uh, you know, because you, you need the, the six conductors to carry the amps. Why amp, one conductor is not enough amps? It's only, what's it, I forget now, 3.9 maybe? Um, or two, two point something. If I had a way to not have to bring this, this pigtail out underneath or over top of the coil, I can save uh, uh, at least uh, one wire thickness if I mashed them all flat and pulled them out. But what if I take this and I start wrapping with these wires on the inside and, and uh, uh, I, this arrow says the direction of wrap. I'm wrapping, 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 wrapping. Um, and I make half the width of the space, and then I come over here, and I, I stick this uh, into the middle of the coil winder, and because I see the the coil has to wrap the same direction, otherwise it'd fight itself. It makes zero electricity. So basically, I uh, turn, once I once I make the second piece here, I start a new one. I made a coil, and I'm gonna make one right beside it in the same coil winder. I'm going to turn it, the coil winder backwards, and I'm going to go uh, around and around and come out. So now I got a, a a group of wires going in. I connect these two together inside. See the pointy thing goes into the pointy thing. So the the, the electric is going the same direction around uh, both coils, and it comes out. Now I got the two ends of. Oh, that's that's going to confuse somebody. Let me go over here. Ah. View, set view, top. Damn if I didn't do it again. View, set view, top. Well, it's possible to hit the right thing. So when I superimpose these two things, which is the way they're actually going to be, and connect them together in here, then I have... Uh, six wires going in, six wires coming out, and uh, those are all facing the outside of the stator where I can make connections. Another thing about this is uh, uh, because the, the these magnets are dangerous, 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 dangerous. My magnets will pull uh, about 11,000 pounds towards each other when they're on these two wheels. You don't want to get uh, between that or handling it or have have one of your uh, um, threaded rods that you, you push it open and close with strip the threads and catch you. No human being will get you back out of that thing. So to, and to avoid <laughs> taking it apart, I'm making the stator in two pieces. And they'll, they'll be uh, on one side, uh, I'm gonna do uh, Y connected. So they start here and it all ends up over there on the other side of the split. And so there's no connection across this one side. The other side, I've got three phases, that's three, three pieces of wire. 
so that you just put the stud up like you're going to do over there anyway. Put a stud on each end and put a bus bar across them. And that lets you take off this half or that half. Uh, and if you burn it up, you only have one half to make maybe. Might get lucky. Doesn't work that way, but you can always hope. Okay, so this this is a, a, a trick coil to, uh, to avoid having to go to... Uh, a square wire, you know, if you get enough. Oh, another thing, if uh, when I when I have my uh, uh, wire thickness here, I think we're doing this. Uh, I can figure out how many uh, with, the, with the number of wraps I have to have. Half the wraps goes on the left half coil, and the other half on the side that's going to be lapped up against it. So I only have half as half as far to go out. That makes sense. There's six six flat wraps, and by putting the six the six wires through a uh, a saw slot going through the the winder, they'll all wrap perfectly flat right on top of each other. There won't be any wires crossed over or uh, any ex excess air gaps. So you can pretty much figure how 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 deep the winding is going to be. You may be able to add. Uh, uh, more windings than is uh, uh, than is, than is required. I forget what this one requires. Fifty-eight wraps, so uh, twenty-nine twenty-nine thicknesses of wire. Uh, and you do this calculation for anything which is in range on the amps times the width of the conductors and all that. That's why the why it's done for six different wire sizes to pick the one you need. Uh, shopping list. Uh, we're in the Philippines, and we go home on vacation, and this is the stuff I get to to bring back next time. I can do this. Uh, let's just go ahead and do this. Here's my shopping list. If I need to know what's on my shopping list when I get home, uh, I can run this uh, video on YouTube, pause the screen, and read it right off the screen. <laughs> There's some more stuff that's going to be on that list, but uh, I just thought I'd start the list since we only got three weeks to go. Now let's go up here to generator. It's thinking about it. Hopefully we won't go to the outer memory message. Oh, wait a minute. It was trying to, to make uh, 3Ds out of absolutely everything. Now, whether you're uh, making a stator for a wind turbine, or, um, or, or you just, if you if you if you think uh, the um, three-phase motor is what you're trying to use for a generator, that'll work. There's nobody says it won't work. It's <laughs> just you can do better. Uh, but if you're if you're doing the, uh, I'm gonna pause this because they're making hollow hollow and the grinding ice. I'm gonna wait wait a while. Okay, off and running again. Um, where we left off. I don't care what you what you do in a motor or a, uh, a generator or it's three phase or uh, polyphase, five phase, whatever you're doing. Draw your coils for one phase, just like the red coils. You need all your magnets, but do a, a, a you know just move your ruler around and, until you get coils around at the right number, like in this case we have 30, but you can do it with uh, six, six and nine or whatever you're doing. Anyway, um, and, and it's, it's much clearer what's going on with the magnets moving across coils if, you, if you're not having to concentrate on, uh, uh, you know, nine things going on at once. If you can get it down to uh, a north and south magnets, and, and you, can, uh, you can write N and S on your magnets. 
uh, over here when I was figuring out the uh, the, the vertical wind turbine, um, I used to use different colors, which I can do on on this. And we're not going to get into to too much on on how this is laid out. This is just a thought exercise. Um, there's three of these diagrams. Um, what this is saying is in this one the purple is uh, inactive this one the red is inactive and the third one the blue is inactive so uh, um, going on that drawing we had where, where there was a lot of activity on on uh, like 80 degrees on these two and the other parts over here are just completely screwed up. Um, there's two ways to build uh, uh, generators. There's four or five ways to build generators. Uh, this is a, a takeoff on, uh, I don't know if the guy was Russian or was from Oklahoma in the U.S., but he does his coils uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, alternating all the way around. Now, uh, if you haven't seen that before, but you've got a ceiling fan in your house, uh, when your capacitor uh, gives out and it slows down and it starts drawing a lot of amps, it's going to burn the windings out of it. So when you're taking it apart, if you're talking about building a stator, you can fix a ceiling fan, trust me. Uh, you take the end caps off, and all that burnt stuff in there, that wire's got to come off. You need to save the uh, the windings off of uh, uh, one inner and one outer coil, so you can count the number of uh, wraps. Uh, you can you can you can you can put more on there, and it won't burn up next time. Uh, and generally, you look. There's plenty of room to add more. They don't have to be uh, um, perfectly shaped. They can be barrel shaped. Uh, because they got an armature in, we got a metal armature. Uh, a ceiling fan is uh, more akin to a, an outrunner motor, like for model airplanes. Uh, the magnets run around the outside, and, and uh, the stator in the middle got coils on it with armatures. This 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 stuff up here, there is no armature. It's an open hole in the middle. It's just full of uh, epoxy potting compound. There's no metal inside the the coils on these three phase uh stators no metal inside the coils none okay uh but if you if you uh if you if you get and crank this around i can crank two different things on this because because i got a, a red and a blue but as, as i was watching it work i would i would watch